<laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Beyond the Mic with Ashley, representing Bastion Media Group. Today, we have Isha from the 978. Um, <coughs> Big Virgo Energy, you feel me? <laughs> and before we get started, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So, you have an album that just came out. So, and it's doing amazing, I saw. How do you feel about it? It actually is. Um, <laughs> when the album came out, when, I, when it dropped, I was like, I'm not going to look at the streams. I'm not going to promote it. I'm going to let it rock for a week. I let it rock for, like, maybe, I think, four days. I logged into this store, and I was like, <sighs> like, me, personally, I'm very humble. Like, I'm not, I didn't set, should I say, I set high expectations for myself, but I'm a little delusional. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, when I first dropped my first music video, I was like, I'm gonna be so famous after this. So like I had high expectations with this album. I've said 50K by the end of the week. Obviously I wasn't gonna do that. But I hit 6K mm. the first week, which was wow. amazing. Um, for me at least, like I'm proud of myself. Um, do you know where your numbers are right now? Yeah, we're at 10 right now. So Like at the current time? Yeah, yeah no, um, well as of yesterday, we're at 10, 10.1. So mm. that's pretty good. Um, Can I you check it right now? No. Oh. I can't even check it on my phone because I don't have the app. Oh. But 15K. Okay, but I've been waiting for the album for so long. How did it, how long did it take? Like two and a half years. Actually, oh, so got, everybody's been waiting. Yeah, when I did my first podcast with back, that's literally when I started working on it. Um, it was maybe June, J May, June of 2020. What that's do you think? When I first started working on so it. So that's a, that's a while. Mm -hmm. So what do you think slowed you down? Um, actually, so that's funny. I was supposed to initially drop the album March 2020 same month I got pregnant so <laughs> yeah I kind of like went MIA um, started to focus on my mental my money myself and I just took a whole break on music um, I was still recording but I hadn't dropped a song like a song with myself in like two and a half years I was only dropping like features and like doing shows or like dropping snippets on Instagram but yeah it's been a long road and you have a son Mm -hmm. you know, so how has that been? Because since like the, it slowed down the album for you and all that stuff, are you still kind of like juggling that? No. So actually, <laughs> I took it very well. Like, um, I gave birth, and two, three months later, I was already performing again, back on mm. my feet. I actually took the pregnancy very well, despite all the things I went through um, emotionally. I, at the end of the day, like I live, breathe, and talk, and walk music. So. Like nothing's ever going to stop me from doing what I want to do. And regardless of what I go through, I'm still going to get what I need to get done. Done. Mm -hmm. So it was actually really exciting. Um, I think I needed that too. Mm. It was very humbling. I needed like to step back because mm. I feel like I was doing too much. 2020, 2021, I was doing way too much. So God says, sit your ass down yeah. for about a year. Yeah. You know, collect your thoughts. Like really seem like I had to really um, evaluate and like look at my surroundings and like, who was around me, who was I sharing these moments with. Like I had to cut a lot of people off, a lot of mm. situations off, um, really recognize who was really there for me and who was there for that picture that they painted of me. And do you think that that was like more represented after you had your child and you had less time? Mm, yeah, actually, definitely. Um, once I gave birth and a couple months, you know, went by and I started coming back outside, I started really being with the pe I, My environment was where it needed to be. I didn't really question anyone around me. Mm. No, and I still don't question people around me to this day because they're not in my life anymore. Oh, okay. I feel like a huge thing with like something so big that happens in your life, big things like that, a lot of people view it as like a setback. And it sounds like you kind of took that as like a that's a why, moment too. yeah because everyone i'm telling you like when i first i, I didn't even i didn't want to believe it like i was like i'm not freaking it like mm. I'm, not, I'm not believing it i'm still outside ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Ah, chilling <laughs> and then all right it's just getting a little weight okay you should don't gain weight so i'm like and um honestly for me it wasn't a setback for me it was motivation and i feel like i needed at that time especially I was at a really like dark place in mm. my life. And I go through those episodes, like sometimes it's seasonal, like usually every winter I'll go through it. But um, I would say last year and the year before were one of my hardest years ever. 2020 and 2021 definitely shaped me um, for who I am today. But 
definitely not a setback. Now everything I do is in his name. I love that, yeah. And like my best friend, she was telling me earlier, she's like, oh, I'm so proud of you because despite what you go through, you always keep it, you know, you always keep it pushing. And that's like all I need to hear. That's all we need to hear as mothers. Like, yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, that shit that's is, it. That's it. Because while you're mentally, doing, like, yeah, while you're doing your work, while you're doing what you need to do, you still thinking like we were just talking about it before this, like, oh, we're still checking up on our kids. We're still making sure. And then there's also this image that is like painted around us and what we're supposed to look like, mm -hmm. how we're supposed to move, how much yeah. people assume how much time we're spending with our kids mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And like people don't really yeah. think about those like details that go into play. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so understandable why it would have taken a little longer to write a whole album yeah. or it would have taken some time. Like I've taken my time to kind of set it as like, oh, well, this is why I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. Like before I didn't really have that. I got pregnant at 19, so okay. I just, I sent it. And so like, I feel like us, like looking back as like women, we have different, we have different takes. So me, I'm like, I'm a businesswoman. So like, I do my business. You're an artist, you do your art, you do your music and all that stuff. We have different lives with similar lives yeah. in the work sense. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's hard for people to kind of like place what a mother is supposed to look like. Cause I'm a mother, you're a mother. Yeah, a busy mom at that. Yeah, I don't exactly. really like, and I don't like the outside opinion thing. Like me Ugh. personally, it took me a long time to post my son. I didn't post my son until he was about, I would say six, seven months. Mm -hmm. um, and even then, like, I don't really, I just started posting him a lot, but I'm very like, when it comes to my private life, like it's it's called a private it's life private for a, for a reason, right? And when it comes to my son, not anybody can, not just anybody mm -mm. can be around him. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of people be on my social media, but I started to look at the beauty of like what an artist is or like a fashion designer, whatever it may be. People don't only love you for your art; they love you for who you are and what you mm. come from. So like getting people familiar with where I come from and what I do aside from music is like it's beautiful at the end of the day people relate to that that's what brings people closer to you that's what people gravitate towards so like um yeah like to an ordinary ordinary person that's on my social media like oh Isha's always outside like yeah I have performances left and right but I am a mother at the end yeah. of the day I am a mother first and if let's say I have a show tonight and my son's not doing good guess what I'm doing I'm going home mm -hmm. I could be dressed makeup done hair done I'm going back home mm -hmm. so I mean Definitely not a setback. Good. Definitely inspired this album, like pushed it even. Like once I gave birth, I was like dropping the album next month. Mm. Um, next, next year, I should say. Um, again, like I'm a perfectionist, perfectionist. So I was supposed to drop it initially J June 1st, June 1st, then July 20th, then August 5th. And I was like, you know what? Let's drop it on my birthday. Let's make it special. I've never done nothing for my birthday. I feel like this is, this is like a good, like new beginning. Um, let's start with my album, something that everybody's been waiting on for two years. Oh, I was waiting on it. It was like mad exciting. I'm so excited to this day. I got bump it every day. I'm my biggest fan. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you are from the 978. Dig a little deeper. You're from the 978. So you went to Lawrence High? Is that yeah. what it is? Or, okay, I kind of lived everywhere. I was just talking to my boo about this last night, but I've lived in oh, like boo. seven states. But we was born and raised in Lawrence. Anybody ask, I'm born and raised in Lawrence. Mm, and do you have siblings? Yeah, there's five of us. So I'm the oldest of do five. They, do they support you? Show, OD, do they yeah. show up? My brother was there on my album release. He was there I from start that. to finish, helping me set up. And you know, he was there till the end of the night. Um, my sister support me. I have an eight year old who literally memorizes my lyrics. So I have to like watch out Shut with her up. sometimes because like now that I'm maturing and- Why you look at me like to that? The ma <laughs> more mature crowd, it's like, I'm not mediocre anymore. So it's kind of, it's hard. Um, I would say though, being a mother has um, made my relationship with her a lot better. And um, there's a lot of things about me that I had to change because I was a little wild. Everybody knows like I was a little wild back then. Um, just not, I wouldn't even um, call it wild. I was just very free. Didn't right. um, care less, no shame. Well, you didn't need to. You didn't really mm -hmm. have. But you know? like, and not saying that I can't be now, but as the way I view myself, I want people to say, I don't want people to say, oh, you know, she's a mom. Why is she doing that? Mm. I still do what I want, but I have to do it in a way where right. it's, you know, presentable and not, I'm not looking wild in these streets anymore because mm -hmm. I have, you know, Kids yeah, to someone it. that like it's gonna go back to him. Like mm -hmm. it all represents him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, nine nine ninety nine dropped on the ninth. Oh my God. I'm hyped. I learned a lot of lessons in this album though. 
a lot of money spent. Um, next project hopefully dropping this winter. Um, oh wow! Yeah, hopefully I'm trying to drop like a four or five song EP with um, one of my boys. His name is Max. He's a dope producer. Ooh, but, who are your top collabs? You know, oh, yeah, yeah. there's so celebrity, old, there's celebrity what do you collabs, mean collabs like, like like dream collabs. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of people I already did music with. I definitely would want to work with Rico Nasty, um, 070 Shake, um, Flip De Niro. Um, yeah. Who's all time Lee. favorite? Like Who's I feel like I make favorite? really good music with them. Who? All time favorite artist? Yeah. Or a collab? Collab. O seven O Shake. Um, she's amazing. You heard it. Um, if y'all don't know O seven O Tap In, she's an amazing artist. She's actually Kaylani's girl, but I don't like to refer to her as that. <laughs> But yeah. She's so much more. Yeah, she's, she's so, so much, much more than, than just Kayla She's so much girl. more than that. But um, it's not a club. So would you say? So would you say you're like? So would you say you're very family oriented with your siblings? So is it sisters, brothers? Yeah, I have one brother. He is 20. 18 year old sister. She just turned 18 two days ago. A 14 year old and an eight year old sister. So oh. I was always like the second mother to them. I love that. So you place like up there, second. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you were raised by mom and dad? No. Um, daddy, daddy's from Brooklyn. Um, that's where my parents met. I think I had moved out of Brooklyn when I was like four years old. He, um, he got deported, I think when I was nine years old. So that's probably mm -hmm. the last time I saw him, spoke to him when I was like 15. It's a little like funky relationship between mom and pop. So like I haven't really spoken to my father in years. Do you think that kind of impacted your music career? Career? Um, no. Um, I didn't really come out the rapper closet till I was like, <laughs> like, fourteen, fifteen. Like I, I always wanted to make music, even since the fifth grade. Like I was always making music, but the first time I actually hit a studio, I was fourteen, and by that time I wasn't really on speaking terms with my father. My mother, though, she always supported since day one. She's an artist herself, so kind of runs in the family. Oh, she's an artist? Would you ever do a song with your mom? She's a singer. Would you ever do a song with your mom? I mean, yeah, we talked about it, but... What if she does, like, an intro for you? She's... What if she did, like, an intro for you? Like, she just did a little intro? I don't know if she's mom. ready for all that clout. No, Dad, give it to her. Give it to her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that would be so dope. Who else has their moms on their track? Like, who else? else? Maybe. We'll, 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 we'll. I'm pushing it now. I'm pushing it now. But yeah, shout out. Okay. 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 So, starting at from where you started at fourteen, fifteen, was that your like your first performance time, your first album time? Did you ever make an album? Is this your first album? No, this is my first project ever. Like I've never made a mixtape EP ever. So it was. It's really exciting. Even like me speaking on it right now. I mean, it hasn't even been a month since the release, but um because I didn't really initially find my sound till 2020 when I just started experimenting and you know stepping out of like just the rap and like getting more into like the melodic flows and the R&B and the dance hall so like th for this to be my first project I think it's amazing like I think I really mm, yeah I really set the bar high like for my next project I gotta go crazy because this for this to be a first project I personally like I say this very humbly I think it's an amazing project you can, if you hear it from start to finish, you can hear like the passion I really have for this. Like you can feel it. Like you, you don't just hear it, you feel it. And mm. every song gives off a different vibe and there's a song for everybody there. So it's like- Oh, I love that. I agree. It's, it's not like a one genre album. Yeah. You know? So that's, and that was, that was what made me very nervous. Cause I had friends telling me, you know, keep it, keep it sweet, keep it short, keep it simple. If you're gonna make it a hip hop album, make sure they're all hip hop tracks. Me, I don't really like, like let's do something different. Like mm -hmm. I had people tell me like, yo, I heard the first song and the second song and the, the first three songs are three completely different tracks. We got some high energetic Missy Elliott type beat with a Travis Scott, you know, lead and then a dance hall sexual, you know, mature song. So it's like, I like, I, I like versatility. I like showing off my versatility. I don't like being boxed in. And when I first um, started coming out with dance hall, Everyone started boxing me in as a dancehall artist. Mm. At first it was cute, you know, I started like making only dancehall tracks. So I was like, all right, I could rock with this. 
but then I wanted to show people that I'm more than just yeah, a, a dance artist. Yeah, like you artist. could do more. So yeah, that's what this this album is literally the birth of my career. Me not making music, or should I say, not releasing music for the past two years. Me naming this album Nine Nine Ninety Nine, which is my birthday, is literally proof that it's the birth of my career. It's just me. It's this is the new me. This is not the Isha you're used to in 2016. The Isha that used to spit bars outside of school. Like, this is, like, mature, grown Isha. Like, I want y'all to feel what I feel. My my views on love, breakup, money. Which are? Bitches. Which are? Yeah. Wait, which are what? Your views on like, uh, and love, they're all, breakup, they're all money. In, what I'm saying, they're all in the album mm. in, 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 in the most enjoyable way. You can listen to the song in whatever mood you're in. Mm. Um, this album. She said, I'm going to keep it to the album. She said, I'm yeah. going to keep it to the album. Oh, but, um, to the album. definitely can get to know me or get to know what I've been through with this album. I'm mm. honestly very proud of it. Do you ever get stuck? Because yeah, I know I'm you've like, right you've, now, you have, really? Yeah, so I feel like I have this thing where when I have a lot of shows lined up or when I have something going for me, would in this case it'd be this album, I like to overwhelm myself with things. It's just a thing, mm. it's just yeah. a thing of mine. I love doing a lot busy. of things at once, exactly. So now I'm already working on my next project and I'm super stuck. I'm like hitting my producer, like send me beats. Like I want this, I want something like this. Like I'm trying to like spark up some sort of inspiration up there, but I realized that you can't force that. And when mm. you feel like you're in the mindset of forcing yourself to be creative, that's when you completely shut down. So I decided to step back a little, let it rock, breathe, focus yeah. on, you know, me, my mental motherhood, my money, whatever it may be. And it, if it's gonna come to me, it's gonna come to me at the right time. Yeah, I was actually speaking to another artist <clears throat> about that, and they were like stuck. They had like writer's block, they whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. But they also had so much going on in their personal lives. And I was like, where does your your like inspiration come from? You, you know, when you're purely being you. And if you get like stuck with like everything in there, you're not gonna be able to like give those juices, you know? Yeah. Like especially if you're the type of artist that has like high beat energy music and you're the type of artist that like like gives that energy you know mm -hmm. it's different you know yeah. yeah i'm gonna just say it drake has it easy if he's in his bag he just yeah, he no just come right about it <laughs> he can just write about it you feel me no but doubt. you know if you're in that like if you're kind of that artist that people want that energy from you like it's hard like you guys have to clear your emotional mindset before you can even get into your musical mindset but sometimes other people can spark that so mm. like i've been in situations where i do have writer's block and i am stuck and let's say i go to malik's event shout out malik by the way and i just boom boom, boom i think of a new song i run to the bathroom voice notes voice memos or like you know oh, what i'm saying that, yeah. it happens all the time like when i'm doubting myself the most i'm always put in a random situation like the other day where was I driving? I think I was driving, I think I was dropping off my son and I wrote a song on the highway. Super dangerous, don't text and drive. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying, like it's just random sparks of inspiration you get, like it's, it's, it's beautiful, that's what life is. I love that, you yeah. Know, it's not planned, it's just random, it's beautiful. So you would say you're optimistic? Yeah, very much. That's where your mindset is completely? No. Nah. On occasion, I'm kind of like all over the place. I wouldn't say it's like a mixed personality thing, but <laughs> she's I like, many, "Don't worry about it." I have many <laughs> beliefs, and let's just say, depending on my mood, depends where my mental is heading. Cause I have a very dark side to myself. A lot of people don't know because I hide it with this, you know, to the loo. But you know, we're human at the end of the day, and um, like I said earlier, people gravitate towards you more as a human than your art. They want to get to know you first before they admire your art. Me specifically? No, and, 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 and that's what I look for when I think of like a favorite artist like Trippy or X or, you know, mm -hmm. or Tupac. Like I love those people for who they are, for their story more than their music. That's just a plus, mm. you know. But mm. um, So do you think that you would ever let your fan base in on that dark side through no, your definitely. album and because if people like x for example if he can do that and he's been through a lot i feel like i can too mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to open up because the people i've opened up to have either let me down in ways where you know other people would know the information or they just spit on my face and it's like not literally but but you just don't have that trust no but as I, you know, as I grow as an artist, I've learned to, you know, just let go a little bit, stop being so, you know, caught up in my own trauma where I can't let anyone in because 
at the end of the day, you cannot blame everybody for someone else's, you know, actions. So, you know, because this guy did me dirty doesn't mean my next will, for example. Right. Just like, my ex-best friend did me dirty doesn't mean you will. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, give everybody a clean slate. With that being said, my life is not perfect. You wouldn't, and I say this very humbly, you would not believe the times I heard, like, oh my gosh, Isha, I wish I was you. Or like, I wish I had your life. Like, no, you don't. I go through things that nobody would even know. And back in 2020, when I did the podcast with Bastian, I was living in my coop. People don't know that. I was living in my car in the summer, no AC, you know, like all my she cars in the trunk. Hot. Yeah, all my cars in the trunk. Unemployment was bussing. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we was partying all day. We was not caring. We was young-minded. I learned so much from that year. Every time I think about growth, I think about that year because I'm not the person I was in 2020. Do you, but, like, your per um, do you like you now? I love me now but I can get better as we all can, Yeah, you know? And like I said, I'm still, like, my son's only nine months. I'm, we're still fresh, we're still healing. You know, the womb takes a long time to heal. So I can say I'm very dark right now, but like I said, I'm trying to slide through the trials. Like, I'm trying to really see the glass half full because I was always seeing it half empty my whole life. And um, I don't know. I, at the end of the day, do I want to be, the, does my son deserve a sad mom or a happy mom? So at the end of the day, oh, I do, yeah. you know, like, that, that's what I say at the end of the day every day. And there's also, like, a stigmatism that you can't really show emotions in front of your kids, that they're not supposed to hold that yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's tough, too. And I hear that. But do you think that that kind of, like, the dark side, the... And I feel like dark is also described as something, like, scary or angry. But dark side can also just mean that you're, you're like, a little bit more down or you have postpartum or anything like that. It can be a dark side like that. Do you I think mean, that fuels like you as a person? It does if I have the right people around me. Oh, At the I time I didn't have the right people around me and I almost made, you know, a mistake that wouldn't had me have me here sitting here today. Um, but now I have a son and that's all I think about. Um, I don't know. I had my dark side right now is more, it's just, it, I have so much weight on my shoulders, so much responsibility on my back, always cutting people's sack. I was telling someone earlier how I feel like my purpose in life is to help heal and um, show people what's wrong from right, because I'm always put in those um, situations where I have to either help or heal someone, and I feel like I'm forced to do that, and if I'm not, then I'm not living up to my purpose in life. I so. truly, in my, I believe that there are healers mm -hmm. placed on this earth that are not specifically meant for anybody, mm -hmm. but we're just meant to like help and meant to be there for people. And unfortunately, that means that those healers don't really get yeah, that's what, I was what everybody say. else gets. Because mm -hmm. you know what I noticed? People who aren't healers, they say things like, oh, it'll all work out. Either way, oh, I know it's gonna end that way. Mm -hmm. And like, it is for them. Yeah. Because of us though, because of the mm -hmm. healers. They think it's all just working out, but it's because we put you there. Yeah. It's because we've helped you, and I genuinely believe that there are those healers, so I completely mm -hmm. understand what you're saying. No. And it's hard, and then you just feel so stretched out, but then also you want to be busy, and you want to keep being that person so that's that what it everybody is. wants. Exactly. I like to occupy myself so that I'm not in here, because when I'm not occupied, I'm in here. Mm -hmm. All right? So, like, if I'm home on a... You know, I'm not working, I'm not making music. I'm in here and there's no way to get me out of here. And I don't have many friends and nobody would believe that. Cause like, whatever. I have a lot of people I get along with. A lot of people I'll say what's up to all that. But you know, I fuck with, I love, I support, I respect, but I don't have a lot of friends. I can count them on both hands. So it's like, and, and when I sit down and I think about who my friends are, are these people I can run to when I'm at my lowest point in life? you know, when I need a break, when I'm about to lose my mind. And I've been in those situations a lot where I had to cut people off because they weren't very understanding or they were, they just, just people that aren't compassionate or considerate of your feelings. And, um... Setting boundaries is tough. Yeah, no, that's very tough. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give y'all, I don't want to give y'all a sad story, but like, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm human. And there was a, many times where I did not want to be here anymore and I wanted mm. to let it all go and just you know, easy way out. But at the end of the day, like every time, and every time I didn't end up doing that, um, how do I explain it? It all resulted in like a blessing. So like, 
I, I won't break it down at, at, with every time I try to, but mm -hmm. um, let's just say the very last time I did try, I had a very good friend, you know, consult me, talk to me. And at that lowest point, you don't want to hear, think of your mother. Yeah, you no. Know, okay. You are some, like, you don't want to hear yeah, the same no. thing, because I, I, I already got to this point hearing that. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. really takes a special someone or something. It could be a song, like, you know how people say, Kid Cudi saved my life, or like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? My son saved my life, whatever it may be. Every time I did it, you know, and I thank God that I'm still here to this day. I do thank God, I'm not gonna lie. My mind sometimes does drift off into, you know, I don't wanna be here anymore. Like, it happens, like I said, I'm human. I'm fighting a lot of demons. There's a lot of things in my life that people don't know about. And like, people, like, whenever I'm down, people would like, Isha, what are you going through? You can't be going through anything. You, you got this and you got that, like, but you don't know what I've been through, <laughs> you know? So it's like, yeah. it, I don't want to get too deep into that, but at the end of the day, like I said, I'm human. We all go through things. I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. nowhere near perfect. And this project, it just means the world to me because it's something that would have never happened if I wasn't here. And it's something that I've been trying to push for the longest to show people why I make music and why this is like something I want to pursue. It's not just a hobby. Ooh, like I want people, you know how people have like, people people have so many like different venues in their life. Like, yeah, I do this, I do that. All I have is music and I'm proud mm. to say that. You know, but I'm not ashamed. that's all you need. I'm not ashamed, but this is all I have, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, it's a very, it's, it's part of me. It's part of who I am. And it's kind of what I was like, you know, raised upon, like everybody in my family does music or is somewhat musically inclined. So it's like kind of destined for it, I guess. Hmm. No, say that with confidence. If you're destined for it, you're destined for it. She's like, I'm destined for it. So I'm, like, I'm destined <laughs> for it. <laughs> Can you just say that? Yeah, no, I am, I, I am destined for it. I know I am. There it is. Yeah, speak it into existence. I got a little sad there. For a I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay. Though. What time do we have? <laughs> 28 minutes. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to wrap it up then. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you so much, Isha, for joining me. Isha from the 97A. We should insert like a little ah! noise. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I'm kind of deuce juice. I'm a little deucey. Just on that clip, but we're doing that, and then be like, I'm a little douche juice. Like, right after. <laughs> nah, I really am a little, like, damn. Nah, this shit, this shit gets you smacked. No, it does. It does. Yeah. It does. But, um, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> it was in my mind before. I literally even said I'm going to wrap it up. I was like, you go. Where can like... we find you? Yeah. Talk so... about her social media. Yeah. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, earlier, you mentioned um, that through your album, you can see love, hate, all that stuff. What is your advice on relationships, on love? Where's your stance on it? All right, let's start off with the fact that I am a lover girl. She said I'm a lover girl. I am. So the thing with me is I know how to be alone. Mm -hmm. I am at peace with myself, finally. I could say that for the past year or two. But at the end of the day, I'm a lover girl, and I love having one person to myself. I love catering to one person. I'm not made for the streets. I don't like that multiple. I don't have, like, dude, my schedule's already... You're like, my mental cannot take it. You know, so I've been in four relationships my whole life. I'm 23. That's a lot of relationships, if you really think about it. Um, all very long relationships, and I learned from every one of them. So my advice on relationships is come clean at the beginning. Whatever it is that you think might hurt you or hurt your relationship in the future, drop it on the table before y'all even, you know, commit. Whether it is, whatever it may be, you know, you rob the bank or mm -hmm. sup with his mother or whatever it commit. may be. Commit. You know, you, you, <laughs> be, 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 you know, be patient, communicate, understand, and more so don't date or how do I say, don't create a picture with someone. Just let it flow, let it rock. Communicate healthy, you know, be considerate, understand one another, understand that there are two different realities and two different lives. And although you guys are together, that does not make y'all one until you guys are in that state. In the beginning, don't expect too much. Mm. Don't expect 
this person to the way it lasted, nor the next. Literally everyone gets a clean state. Patience, communication, consideration oh. is key. Those three. Without that, your relationship will literally not succeed. I had to learn that three times. We're young. Mm. We learn. I learned now. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I, I can say that I finally learned. And I can do this the right way this time without, you know, screwing up mentally or whatnot. And so, our, yeah. And our generation doesn't even like relationships. Like, that's not what, like how we do it. Listen, I, like I said, I can be alone, but I love, I love being in a relationship. I love sharing moments with someone and being able to grow someone. Not using someone for character development, mm. but using someone. Repeat that one more time. Don't use people for character, character development. development. Don't do that. Because I'm not going to name any names, but you I can. done built, I done built <laughs> niggas up here. But do it. <laughs> But do it. I thought you will. Who you will? I would never. Because I feel like I'm a judge. Say it. Say it. Shout out y'all. But I will say, shout out my new boo. He's amazing. Uh, drop that name. Finally. Tell me the name. His name's Dejan. Finally, oh, okay. I finally met someone that can actually understand me and my traumas and not shut me out. That's another thing. People come with their own story. And if you're not able to hear that and, you know, actually respect that. And when I say respect that, I mean, if you tell me something traumatic about yourself, I'm not throwing it at you at an argument. Mm. But when you do, if you were to do something similar to me, I'm going to respect that because you trusted me with that personal info. So like to finally meet someone that can, you know, understand you and listen to you and be gentle with you, especially at this day, I, I have a kid now. I'm not dealing with none of that. Yeah. Either you act right or you get left. <laughs> but shout out my Virgo king. Oh, you guys are both Virgos. And I'm about to take another shot. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And shout out to Bastion Media Group for production, Limpy on camera, and Isha from the 978 for sharing your beautiful story. It was very intuitive. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Let the people know where they can find you. Um, so finally, I am back on all platforms at Isha from the 978. Um, still building my portfolio up, you know, trying to get my Google and all that, you know, intact. But Isha from the 970 on all platforms. Album called 9999. And shout out Michael, aka Bastion Drip, aka 978 only. And we out. And we out.